hej! I kväll ska jag vara med på Klimatprat i Gävle. Eh, dit kommer bland andra eh, klimatforskaren Kevin Andersen som just nu är ute på cykelturné. Cyklar runt halva landet för att öka medvetenheten om klimatfrågor. Och jag tänkte så här att kan Kevin cykla genom halva landet så kan väl jag gå från Sandviken till Gävle. What do you have in your uh, on your bike here? Um, I have uh, shoes, socks, shirt, um, a slightly warmer top. So everything you need for a week is, is, is sort of wrapped up in the bike here. But I will be wearing very similar clothes on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's a, it's a wash in the sink job. What are you uh, looking forward to the most? Getting back safely. <laughs> But hopefully, uh, if the bike work goes well, then the presentations are. I reasonably well accepted and uh, good good liaison with the with the various people turning up from companies and from civil society and so forth and from local government. Um, that I can't really ask for more. I hope what I do is reasonably worthwhile and um, has good feedback. So I come back slightly wiser than I went, and hopefully I will um, provide some information to other people that they weren't aware of. Well, that's the end of the first formal day of the tour with uh, three presentations complete. The first this morning was um, in Lund with the commune and a fairly large set of civil servants. And it was uh, pleasing to me to see the level of ambition that they, uh, that they have in terms of reducing emissions, but not just within the council itself but across the full you know, uh, width of activities within the constituency. I then attended a, a public event in the afternoon and gave a presentation there. And uh, again, as I often find in Sweden, the level of um, sort of can-do mentality amongst civil society was, was pleasing to see and witness. Um, challenging questions quite often, but uh, certainly uh, recognition of the scale of the challenge and we discussed in some detail some of the obstacles that we faced and I think most of the time we felt that we could actually overcome the obstacles. The biggest problem still though I think was the time frame for delivering the rates of mitigation that were necessary and I think there we still had some work to do in trying to, to, to marry the solutions that we had with how fast we could deliver them. second day now um, of my tour and I'm stopped here uh, for a cup of tea after 110 kilometers or so with a family who live in the house behind me which is a passive house in other words it uses no energy the people living in it are just a normal family living a normal day-to-day -day life so clearly there are plenty of things we can do with a bit of ingenuity insight um, and some political leadership I left Hampstead yesterday morning and battled through 150 kilometres of incessant rain to arrive just in time in Gothenburg for um, a packed civil society um, event uh, with a very vociferous and engaged audience. But what was particularly warming to me was to hear the uh, very enlightened and thoughtful and insightful comments from um, a small panel of three. First, that culture is understanding culture is really important if we are to drive rapid change in our society, but also that technology and culture are deeply entwined. We cannot see these things as separate. Uh, the final big issue I think yesterday was, was the role, was understanding the role of journalists and the media in informing the public about these issues so that, can be, so that they can be reasoned debate, and particularly in this year of an election in Sweden. And thus far the feeling was that the journalists had broadly failed in this responsibility. What do we need the politicians to bring into the coming election? I would say it's not any technical question. It's something else which I picked up from Kevin's talk, and that is courage. Because the transition is necessary, and it can be made. That's what Kevin also showed in his figures. But it really takes leadership and courage. Courage from our politicians, but also courage from us as citizens to embrace this transition. Och jag önskar att vi skulle kanske lägga ifrån oss lite diskussionen kring elbilar och självkörande bilar och 
alla de där sakerna och, och prata lite mer kollektivtrafik också. Mer tåg, mer bussar, bättre cykelvägar. Man kommer ganska långt med elcykel hela året runt. Det tycker jag. Ja, det här med politiker i all ära, det är ju handling som räknas. Att snacka går ju, men liksom det, det är handlingen som räknas. Och politikerna förstår inte att vi vill mycket mer än vad de tror. Som institutet gör sina årliga undersökningar om vad vi oroar oss för. Och förra året var det klimat- och miljöproblem som var nummer ett. Och jag ser inte det i valrörelsen särskilt mycket. Kevin raised the concern that we are moving way too slow and that our carbon budget is running out too fast. I agree with what Kevin was saying. However, I also think there is something to be remembered about how fast things change can happen and in that it's exponential. 20 years ago many were saying that wind energy would never ever be commercially viable and be able to compete with other energy sources but today it's the cheapest. So I think that's uh, some, a positive note to, to remember is that change can happen very fast once it gets started. Good morning, Isaac. Good morning, Kevin. Have you been out now for two weeks on the Swedish carbon cycle? Is this, every, is this something you would ever do again? Yes, yeah, certainly. I've, I've, I've learned a lot from it. I think the key message to me is that whether it's civil society or whether it's local policymakers in the communes and the land, there's a, there's a real sort of desire to be putting in place the things that are necessary for Sweden to deliver on the Paris commitment. But there is also a strong belief across all of the communes I've visited that actually the real obstacles are the powers that they have and that the national policymakers really are not that engaged in the, in, in the real delivery. They're much, they appear to be, I think, and I think this is a fair reflection from many of the people I've spoken to, that, that they're more interested in the, in the sort of short-term sort of rhetorical sponsors to the challenges rather than actually um, putting in place uh, the structure whereby the local um, councils and communities and civil society can start to make the changes that are necessary. So I think the real obstacle is not, is not the population so much and not the, not, and not the local policy makers, but it's much more the national framework. Um, and they all have to come together. They've got to sort of mirror each other's concerns if we are going to address climate change. Sweden is actually looking to expand its aviation sector significantly and is building a new gas terminal at Gothenburg which is locking Sweden into another 40 years if not more of high carbon fossil fuels. These are really not the sorts of signs of a progressive country in line with its Paris commitments. I think that's a strong message for the policymakers that other people are looking to them to show some real leadership. Thanks very much Isa. Right. Right, have a good day. You too.